Hello and welcome back to another episode of the DIYGuy.net. Alright, today we're going to show you how to install a generator, interlock kit, or a manual lockout kit on an Eton panel. Now what this uh, interlock kit allows you to do is use your load center here or your main panel as a transfer switch. Uh, you can be able to back feed your generator to your panel safely as this is going to stop the generator power from going out onto the lines and electrocuting the utility workers or linesmen that are restoring your power. So what's nice about this interlock kit is it allows you to back feed your entire panel so you can use any circuit within your panel. Obviously how many circuits you can use at once is going to depend on the size of your generator. Uh, but if you were to buy a manual transfer switch you'd be limited to the number of circuits that you bought. So if you bought a six circuit manual transfer switch you'd be limited to those six circuits. So with this, you're allowed to use anything within your panel. You just got to cycle throughs to make sure you don't overload your generator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open the panel door. Uh, we'll hold the bracket where it goes, and we'll show you how it works real quick. Then we'll go ahead and get a Phillips screwdriver, a number two square bit, remove our six panel screws for the cover. We'll go ahead and remove the cover and set it on the bench, and then we'll go ahead and get started installing the interlock kit. All right, so we got our main panel open here. You can see our main breaker up here. So these two slots on the right here for a double pole breaker, it needs to be sized accordingly to your generator. This is where your back feed breaker for your generator needs to be located as the bracket stops this from being on while this is on. So you need to shut your main breaker off before you turn the generator and vice versa and that's how it works. We'll go ahead and grab the bracket, set it in there real quick and show you how it works. Alright, so we got the bracket. So what it's going to do is be mounted right there. So as you see, we can't turn the generator power on while our main breaker is on. If we were to shut our main breaker off, then this bracket would be allowed to slide up, thus letting us turn the generator breaker back on and using the generator power rather than the land power or coming from the utility company and vice versa. So you'd shut your breaker off, stopping the generator from feeding the panel. This would slide back down and then it lets you turn the main power back on. So this does meet code as you can't turn one on without having the other one off. So we're going to go ahead and grab our Phillips screwdriver, like I said, remove this panel cover, get it on the bench, and we'll start drilling it and attaching this bracket. All right, so we have our panel over here on the bench, flipped upside down. On this particular panel, you'll see these four little dimpled areas. Um, that aligns perfectly with the outside mounting holes on the bracket. Um, so we're going to get a 532 drill bit. We're going to go ahead and drill those out. Uh, depending on your panel, you may need to use the inside mounting holes. Um, they do give you different size screws. Um, the longer ones are for the inside mounting holes as the bracket is curved, and the shorter ones are for the outside. So we're going to get that 532 drill bit. We'll drill our pre-dimpled areas. Then we'll go ahead and get the 5 16 nut driver or socket, and we'll go ahead and thread in the bolts and attach the bracket to the panel. Uh, before you start drilling, it's a good idea just to have a junk piece of wood. Uh, put it in there just so you don't actually end up hitting the front side of the door. So now that we got our wood in there, we'll go ahead and drill it. Go ahead and move that block up to the next hole. Alright, so now that we have our holes drilled, um, we'll grab our hardware. Like I said, there is a long and a short. Um, for the outside mounting, we're going to use a short. Alright, next, we're going to go ahead and stand the panel up on edge. We'll go ahead and open the door, let it swing down. We'll grab our interlock kit. We'll align it with our four holes here. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and grab our hardware. And we're going to install it from the back side here, through the panel, and then into the interlock kit to hold it in position. Now, I see a lot of people installing the screws from the front side. Uh, they are meant to be installed in the back side, that way you can't easily remove the bracket. 
Um, in order to remove the bracket, you'd have to remove the front panel, remove those screws, and then remove the bracket. Um, by then, hopefully someone would notice that that breaker in that first slot is being used to backfeed the panel from a generator. So that's all we do is just put the screws right into the back side. We'll put the other two in and that'll finish mounting the bracket to the panel. So we'll go ahead and spin it around so you can see it from the back side. All right, so we got our four mounting screws in. Uh, they're snug down and tight. That holds our interlock kit to our panel cover. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back over to our panel, grab our six panel screws, and go ahead and attach the panel cover back to the panel. All right, so now that we have our panel cover reattached to our panel, those six screws, and they're on nice and tight, we can go ahead and grab our stickers or decals. Uh, the yellow one here is the instructions for how to operate the interlock kit. Um, and this one here identifies this breaker as a mechanically interlocked breaker. Uh, so this one needs to end up somewhere here. Uh, I like to just trim the edge off a little bit and get it so it fits exactly on top of the breaker and it won't interfere with your labeling of your breakers later on. As for the instructions, uh, we're going to put them right here. Um, that way they're easy to find and locate and easily read. Uh, some people do put them above here. Um, the only problem with that, eventually over time, once this slides up and down, um, it's going to mess up the bottom half of the instructions and you probably won't be able to read them. Uh, so it's best to put that over here on this side. So just in case you wanted to read the instructions. So that concludes installing the interlock kit on your panel. Um, yours should look something similar as this. Uh, we have our instructions somewhere where they won't get damaged and they're easily readable with inside the panel. Uh, we have a white sticker up there to identify that breaker as a mechanically interlocked breaker. We have our interlock kit installed with the screws coming from the back side. That way it can't be easily removed or tampered with. So that's it. We just showed you how to install a generator interlock kit or a manual lockout kit for an Eton panel. Don't forget to click the link in the description, which will take you to our website for a full write-up. You can also click that subscribe button in the middle. On the right, we have a recommended video just for you. And on the left, you'll find our recent upload. Thanks for watching another episode of the DIYGuy.net.